All right. If you're if you're just joining, um, we're giving um, everyone just a few minutes to to be able to join um, the webinar today to make sure everyone is in the room before we jump in. Okay. Looks like our participants number has, has kind of um, leveled off or slowed down for a minute. So I will go ahead and, um, and get us started um, and just say thank you so much for join, joining us today for our biomed um, webinar. We are so excited to have you with us. Um, thank you for making this time. Uh, I did just want to go ahead and um, share a little bit about um, Duke Solutions, um, you know, what we do here um, and, and a little bit about each of our speakers. So um, here at Duke Solutions, we are focused on really being able to provide um, operations management systems for um, specifically uh, the healthcare um, industry and healthcare professionals. Um, and again, the focus of this webinar today is on biomed and being able to just partner, um, you know, with with people in in those organizations to be able to support you all. Um, the speakers that we Hang on one second. The speakers that we have with us today are um, Kyle and Brayden. Um, and Kyle comes with um, about two decades of experience um, in our healthcare. Actually, let me pause. I have a have a question. Can everyone hear me okay? Just wanna make sure that all of our participants are able to to hear. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Sorry, I just wanted to should have checked that at the beginning, actually. Um, so again, as we jump in, um, just introducing Kyle. Um, Kyle comes with um, really about 20 years of experience in the senior living and healthcare industry. Um, his focus over that time has been on um, management and engineering of healthcare operations software. Um, and he is uh, the product manager for the Works Hub here at Duke Solutions. Um, and his goal is to be able to create solutions to um, support and solve operational problems um, for healthcare operations professionals. Brayden is also with us today, and he brings um, just a, a great set of skills and, um, and just a wide range of experience, um, not only in healthcare, but across industries, um, such as hospitality, um, you know, television and theater, and, and much more. Um, but really, Brayden is, um, is really passionate about our biomed, um, you know, solution and being able to Support our clients in that way um, and really his knowledge of technology has enabled him to be able to help hospitals um, just be more efficient um, you know in in their business and in their operations so before I pass this over the one thing I also wanted to note was we have a Q&A box at the very bottom of, um, of the screen um, hopefully it's at the bottom of your screen. And as we go throughout this webinar, um, we would love if you have questions, feel free to, to put those in there. And um, we will reserve time at the very end of this webinar to be able to answer your questions. Um, so again, if, if you have any questions, there's a, a chat box, but really the Q&A box is, is the place to put that. Um, and then we'll also have some polls throughout this webinar. Um, and we would love your feedback um, as it helps us better understand how to, how to partner with you all. So with that, I will hand that over um, or hand this over to Kyle. Hey, thanks, Teresa. Um, so I'm Kyle. Thanks for joining everybody. And uh, hopefully my internet connection stays stable. I got the kids on the, the Netflix parenting plan right now. <laughs> so, or the Netflix education plan right now. Um, and I'm glad to have Braden here with me as well. And we'll be um, taking you through some of what we built for, for Biomed and we're gonna, you know, give you a bit of PowerPoint. Unfortunately, then we're going to jump into software and, and sort of go live through that. So let's take a look at, at uh, what we're going to be covering today. Current state of biomed. So this is after, you know, years of, of interviewing with clients and working in the healthcare space, uh, where we've come to as far as what we think the current state of biomed is, um, how we got to here from a product standpoint. So how did we decide what we needed to build um, to get us to a product that's, that's meaningful to the marketplace. Um, what's in version one and why? And <clears throat> we're, then we're gonna jump into software. Okay, so let's keep it going. And we'll look a bit about, we'll talk a bit about what's coming next. So we've, we've launched sort of our, our version one and we're already 
deep into version two already, so we'll talk about what's coming next. Um, and then we'll jump into some Q&A. So like Teresa said, put them in the, in the Q&A section of the Zoom um, control panel and we'll be uh, responding to those questions. We'll leave a bunch of time at the end to get into those questions. Um, so with that, I'm going to take it to, to Braden and um, I'll go on mute and he'll jump in and we're going to talk a bit about the, the current state of biomed. Ah, thanks Kyle for that. Teresa, thanks for the, inter in the, the intro and uh, thanks everyone for taking a little time out of your day today to learn about uh, this really exciting product that we're really excited to bring to the market. So when we start thinking about biomed and we start thinking about like C a CMMS platform, um, you know, some people still, you know, running Excel, some people uh, managing through, through what's become very complicated, very over customized systems to meet what you need to do to manage your, the needs of a biomed department. Uh, so, you know, from managing your different models to managing batteries and beyond, Dude Solutions has really looked at a way to, to simplify the process of managing your models, your batteries, uh, all of those reports and making it super easy so that your CMMS becomes more of a tool you're using and not a burden that you're lugging through day to day of, oh, I wish I could do this, I wish I could do that as, as the industry changed. And then one of the, the, the next thing is um, being able to gather all that equipment uh, and get that data quicker than ever, run those reports, make smart decisions, make quick action, uh, and forget that you're running a piece of software behind to make all that happen. And it just becoming that intuitive part of, of your day is, is our goal with this. And then one of the last things is compliance. Uh, we all live in, in a, we all work in a very regulated industry. So how can this product make it a little easier to know that you're getting that 100% completion on PMs, doing risk assessments on every piece of equipment that comes in, and really under having one single source where with a few clicks of a button, you can know you're compliant. And if you need to make corrections to your, to your compliance program, you're able to quickly and easily do that. Uh, and then simply simplify the day-to-day. -day. You know, software shouldn't be the burden of your day. So here at Dude Solutions, especially with the work sub, we try to build software that it becomes intuitive to your day-to-day. -to -day. It just becomes a part of what you do is, uh, is uh, as easy as a screwdriver is to use. We try to make the work sub the same way that you're managing your work. You're not having to manage the software. Uh, some of the ways we do that is by making assets super easy to search and find. Hit search. You're able to type in a few keywords or search by a category of device, a location you're looking at, and make it as easy as we can to find the equipment that you're looking for. So you can find with reports. Uh, we all struggle. You know, I used to work in healthcare. I understand what it's like to be able to need to run that report to get that one little nugget of data that you need to go show a clinical person of why we rejected that model or why we made this decision. Uh, or being able, when you, have a, when you have, say, the Joint Commission standing in your lobby, knowing that you can export those 25 documents that they're going to need to see uh, to give you your gold star rating. So making those as easy as we can. And then beyond that, making, making that, that data useful making it where you're able to make smart decisions about new models you're going to bring into your organization, retiring assets, putting assets into an alternative maintenance program, and having a source where it's really easy to manage the life cycle of, of those uh, models and assets. And then some tools, the tools, how do we make this easier? Uh, connecting across facilities and departments. So one of the really cool things about the work sub is that ability to, when you're doing a big, large, say, install project, uh, say for a new scope washer, and you need to involve housekeeping and facilities and biomed and contractors and multiple budgets, the work sub gives you a place to bring all that work together. So instead of building a Gantt chart that kind of lives and dies across what never really happened, the work sub delivers a product management, a project management tool with, that's measuring project by work as it gets done. So if uh, Biomed can't start installing a piece of equipment until facilities, until the plumbers are done, that interaction can happen within the work sub to know that you're moving in real time and making the most uh, of budgets and of time from all of those departments. And keeping a pulse in your tar department. Work sub makes it super easy to be able to, with a few clicks, see what your technicians are doing, see where they're doing it, see how long they've been spent doing it, uh, and see what else is on their plate. So if you've got a technician that's getting overloaded with PMs, and preventative maintenance, you're easily able to, to move work around and make sure that you're keeping a good balance of workload. And then lastly, and most probably most importantly, as uh, we're living in an era of more infection control measures, is going mobile. So the great thing about the work sub is there's no, no downloads needed. You don't need a VPN. Uh, if you can go to a website, you can use the work sub mobile uh, and really can help take your department to a new level with barcode scanning, 
uh, with completing work, with do PMs, being able to access those those manuals and procedures that are stored up in your file library. So really re being able to leverage everything you can do on your desktop into a multiple device, eliminating touch points where multiple technicians aren't sharing one computer, cutting down on touch points, and really making it a, a safer work environment for everyone. Uh, so, uh, so now how do we get here? So Kyle, I think it's gonna tell us a little bit about uh, kind of how we landed here uh, and start jumping towards closer to getting you in product. So we, um, for five years now, have been having customers tell us, "Oh, we need a better we need a solution for biomed." And we've had some people trying to make our our facilities management applications work for biomed, but there's a number of gaps in what we were doing um, for our facilities uh, customers that just didn't work for biomed. So we did a lot of studying. We looked at at what we were capable of. Um, what the market demanded, where people were struggling with their existing systems, where they spent the most amount of time, or where they would throw their, their hands up and, and sort of give up. Um, and we settled on a number of areas of focus. Um, so let me just take you through what we're looking at here. So all the stuff in blue is the stuff we identified for um, sort of the early version of Biomed. These are the things that people struggle with big time. Everything in red, these are big issues. Um, but they require a lot more lead time from development, a lot more consulting with clients and partners and, and sort of more trickier development processes where there's a smaller amount of people struggling with those. We decided to go with the stuff that was most relevant. Um, the biggest one for everybody was a consistent taxonomy. And what we mean by that is how are you classifying your equipment? How are you labeling things so that you know how many uh, pieces of a certain model you have, you know the size of your fleet, um, you know how your PM is categorized. You can report on these things and reliably know what you've got. Um, files, big problem with files in Biomed. People are always looking for, for instructions for use. They're always looking for manuals. They're looking for um, spec sheets, that sort of stuff. It, these are sometimes in binders. Sometimes they're in another system. Sometimes they're in Dropbox, OneDrive, who knows where. They're just all over the place. We needed a better solution to centralize files and make sure they could be linked up to equipment and they would flow through to, to PMs and all that stuff. Finding data that relates back to having consistent ways of tracking data, um, mostly searching for equipment in a lot of, uh, in a couple other systems that, that we saw people using, it could be 30 seconds to two minutes to find a piece of equipment. Um, and that for me just, just was, was too much. It should be in a, in a couple seconds, you should be able to find what you're looking for to link it up to a request or a PM or a work order, that sort of thing. Um, battery management emerged as a huge problem for people. We saw all sorts of creative and unique and innovative ways of circumventing the systems they were using to manage the batteries that exist inside your biomedical equipment. Um, there was a lot of workarounds happening, a lot of gaps in reporting. Um, and one of the things you'll see is we built a whole new battery management capacity within our system to support our, our customers on, on Biomed to get some insight into what are these batteries, how many do I have, uh, when do they need to be replaced, what's my PM, and all that stuff. Um, control over models, this was, was a big issue too, where it, we didn't want it to become the Wild West where you'd have four or five different models of the same type of device. We wanted consistency there to simplify an already complex operation where you're not having different PM procedures or different uh, vendors helping you manage these devices, it was standardized. Of course, we needed to track compliance. We needed data about connectivity. So how do these devices connect to networks? Uh, what MAC address are they? What port are they plugged into? That sort of stuff. Reporting on downtime, we need flexible risk assessment so you could risk assess your assets um, and do it in a different way than your facilities counterparts might do it. Um, so all those things are things that we focused on in this version. Other stuff you see in red, this is in our roadmap, these are things that we're evaluating. We're doing R&D on these. RTLS to find equipment that moves around in real time. Um, recalls and how you're tracking um, your recalls through ECRI, ECRI or RASMAS or different mechanisms like that. Um, integration with OneSource, they're another product that's got um, manuals and, and, and instructions for use on their site. RFIDs come up. Uh, diagnostic feeds and med testers, so getting data directly from devices um, to trigger workflows. These are all things that we're interested in. We've had people talk to us about it. We really are looking for a partner, customer partner, to help us through some of these things, to really clearly articulate what they need um, and work with us to, through the build out of those items. So more stuff will be coming soon. 
Uh, but for the most part, what we're trying to get at is an easy to use asset-based workflow tool that makes sure everybody adopts it, that it's not half implemented or half adopted, that it's, it's part of the way you work. And all of your assets are in there. They're clearly um, categorized. There's consistency that'll drive compliance um, and it'll drive ease of workflow, ease of work within our system. Um, so before we jump into software, I wanted to ask Teresa to put up a poll about your equipment inventory. This is a fundamental issue that we saw with people that was their number one concern is, I have no confidence in my equipment inventory that I have, so what is tracked in my system? Um, so you'll see a poll appear on your screen. Um, and this is a pretty straightforward one. When you look at the equipment that you're tracking, um, how would you rate the quality and consistency of your equipment? Is it, and you can just click on, on these, is it perfect? Um, kudos to you if it is. Um, is it good? Is it mediocre? Is it poor? Uh, what equipment inventory data? Sometimes that's the, <laughs> that's the deal that we're experiencing. Um, so we'll give you a bit of time to vote. Just click on where you land and then we'll share the results back and, and we'll, talk, we'll, we'll, we'll step into areas of our system that we think can help improve um, consistency. So where we need the Jeopardy theme song to fill yeah. in when people are doing like do 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 the next one do 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 <laughs> um, so let's let's go ahead and see how people scored all right good yeah what equipment inventory there's always someone right who's who's got what equipment inventory um, as far as most people in the middle range which is typical they're good or mediocre most of the time when we've looked at equipment uh, or the inventory data coming from biomed it's usually pretty good um, sometimes there's there's one there's items in there where you can tell this is this is you couldn't find this item it may be missing it may be gone so there's some suspect items in there often but typically it's reasonably good or it's or you're looking for a solution to uh, really turn the corner and, and make it even better. Um, so let's do this. We're going to look at, let's get out of PowerPoint maybe. Uh, I was going to get into this idea of a, a, a new model dashboard, but what we'll do is we'll jump into software. Give me one second here and we'll flip to, flip to software. So let me, Share my screen. So within the Biomed application, Brayden, are you seeing my model dashboard right now? Yep, you're there. We're good. All right. <laughs> so I have so many screens right now. Um, so on our model dashboard, this is really about a workflow behind your models that you're bringing online within your, your Biomed organization. Um, so one of our goals is to not only make it easy to define at the model level, what are the, what's the data requirements for all of these pieces of equipment when I track those individual pieces of equipment? And what is the workflow for managing an, in, a new model being brought into my organization? And when we, when we mean um, what is the data that I'm tracking, let me jump into something. Let's do, um, steam sterilizer. So let me jump into this model. So the model is, think of it like a template that sits above your equipment. So you're gonna have individual, you might have multiple sterilizers of the same model. Um, those individual ones will have their own barcode and their own serial number, um, their own PM programs potentially. But at the very top level of this model, we wanna define all of these things about this model such that the data is rich, the data is consistent, the data is complete, so that when I bring I, when I bring one of those those assets uh, on board, everything's there for me already. So if I buy a new sterilizer, comes off a loading dock, I install, it's done. All the the data carried forward from this top level model that was already approved. So I've got this model that's approved. It's a steam sterilizer. It's categorized. We can track things as far as um, does this have clinical alarms? Does it contain PHI? Because you might have specific procedures around if you have to send this out for service, how we have to wipe that data. Um, does it require manual time change? This is a problem we've seen a ton of people struggle with is what are these devices that when, when 
uh, daily savings rules around how do I go and identify the ones that go update the time that's on those. We can, for a given model, define what the PM templates are for those. So we can say, um, here's my, my weekly steam sterilizer cleaning. I might have a monthly, I might have an annual. You can get all of those defined at the very model level so that when you do bring a new sterilizer online, all this stuff gets copied forward down to it. Batteries, like we mentioned before, battery is a huge component of a lot of these uh, devices. Um, so we've got the, the capability to track details about batteries down to capacity, um, your voltage, chemistry, even your cost and estimated life. So you can run replacement reports on, on what's going to cost to replace these batteries next year. Um, so we can always define these batteries at the model level um, because they'll typically come with a battery. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't replace it later with a, with a, um, a different battery, but we're, we're able to allow you to track those things. The batteries themselves give you some flexibility to track PM specifically on a battery. You can do AEM on a battery. You can do a risk assessment on a battery. Um, so it's like a sub asset, so a sub component of your sterilizer or whatever piece of equipment. Speaking of risk at your model level, we can define all of these, uh, how you assess risk within your organization. This can be a completely separate strategy from how you as assess risk on the facility side. You can have a separate mechanism and essentially you can score things. And as I start scoring things, my risk levels will change for this item. So you can risk assess at the model. So anytime you bring one of these new steam sterilizers online, it's already risk assessed, it's got that in there. Safety notes can go with this. Um, if there's things like um, PPE required, you can always have that. Label instructions you can do. So if there's specific labels that go on these things, um, you can have that. Your AEM details, you can track all of that information. And of course, so all right of your- So right AEM, Kyle, we have, a, we have a question that came in about AEM that I think we should cover now. Sure. And it is, it comes from Dell and says, do you see your CMMS make suggestions for AEM based on data uh, to increase or decrease PM frequencies? This is, a, this is a great question. So I guess the short story is no, it doesn't right now. Um, the longer story is that this is something that's out on our radar as we work with our, we have a, a team of data scientists at our company that look at using data, the existing data to build predictive models on how to optimize your, your PM strategies. So this is something that is pretty hot for us. You've touched on something that, that we talk about quite frequently at, at Dude Solutions. Um, so I would expect that this will be something that's coming. It's not right now. We've got a few ideas on how to sort of manually do that. If you were to look quarterly at a, a series of reports, you might be able to as assess your, your PM strategy and sort of um, determine if the, an AEM program makes sense. Um, but I think we want to automate that to have sort of the predictable, uh, predictive maintenance engine kick in and suggest things to you. You got any further insight into that, Braden? Um, I like to say, yeah, that uh, as we're still kind of new and figuring out exactly what AEM needs, I think we're, this is a place where we partner. This is a great place where the dude would partner with clients here to help to, to kind of determine what that model would look like. So we're always looking for that client feedback of, of how we can build the tool to really be smart about AEMs. I know AEMs is one of those areas, and I was working in healthcare, we, you always struggle to make the best decision. So having clients bring forward those really smart models around mean time between failure and some of these other practices to be able to make great AEM decisions. I think this is a great place where we'd always uh, look for, for clients to bring us the suggestions here, uh, which is where some of our best ideas come from on that. So of course, even at the model level, uh, one, of the, one of the major benefits of having this model defined at the highest level is that you can link up all of your attachments here. These could be your, your, your OEM manuals. Um, safety sheets, it could be PM procedures that come from manuals, uh, come from manufacturers, anything you could imagine, photos, things like that. And you can simply just upload those. It could come from Dropbox. We've got Microsoft OneDrive coming soon. We've got a built-in file library that's that's like a, a works hub, uh, centralized repo of any files that have previously been uploaded or that you want to put into that library. We can also allow you to access those and upload those. Um, and then what this means is anytime you add a new piece of equipment into your fleet, it'll down, it'll like connect it to those existing manuals that came from the model. So you don't have to re-upload them or think about linking manuals. They'll just be there. Um, speaking of files, files are a big part of Biomed. I think we've got a poll similar to the last one that's specifically about how you're tracking your files. Um, 
maybe Teresa, you can launch that poll. We'll look at what, how that poll is crafted and see if we can get some feedback from the from the audience here on how they're managing files and attachments. So how are you storing and organizing your equipment manuals? We've seen, and instructions for use, we've seen a lot of stuff. Um, so there's a lot of options here where, where it's, how are you organ storing and organizing? You know, nothing, it's a wild west over here. That comes up lots where it's just always a scramble. Uh, some people have a network share set up. So a, a drive is shared within their, their network environment. They, they can access those files exist. Paper, of course, uh, filing folders, we've seen that lots. Microsoft OneDrive is a good source to have. It's it's similar to a network share, but a bit more sophisticated in that um, you can be shared over the internet. Uh, OneSource, they're a, they're a potentially a future partner for us as far as integrating with. Um, and then Dropbox, of course, is similar to OneDrive. Um, so cue the GPT theme song, and then we can take a look at the results I'll here. spare everyone my singing on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see how people have voted on, on this one. Um, we've seen it all. Um, so a, a bunch of people on paper files. It's a wild west over here, that's common. Network share is often sort of um, the situation that people are in now. When it comes to network shares can be difficult, especially if you need to access um, the file from a mobile device. Sometimes those shares aren't available there. Um, so we, we the, the WorkSub's built-in file library, simplifies that as long as you have an internet connection you've got it um, OneDrive's great Dropbox is great too for, for sharing stuff over the internet making sure it's available all the time and the nice um, thing about the works up too is that our, the file library's got permissions built around it so that you know maybe you want uh, a certain you know department managers to have access to all those so you can set those permissions to give different users within your organization access to those files so not everyone has access but you know if you're you know if you've got joint commission there you want to be able to make sure all your managers and show the surveyors that they can pull up a file. You have that ability with the works up to, to, to control the, those access levels. So when you hear us talking about file library, it's not everyone having access. You have full control over who, who can see those files. Exactly. So coming back to the um, this model dashboard. So there could be several people within your organization that have access to this. There would be someone at the highest level who approves new models that are being proposed. Um, so there's workflows built into this. You can see this at the top where I've got uh, 17 models uh, in my organization. One's awaiting revision. So that means someone created it. They had permission to create a model. It went to me for approval, let's say, and I sent it back and said, you got to revise this. We need the PMs in there. Let's say that's the example. So I can see those. I can click on those. Certain people can have, can have access to certain parts of this workflow. So if I'm someone who's a submitter, but I can't approve things, I might be on the, on the hook for uh, revising things. So if it gets sent back to me, I can revise it. Anything that's pending approval, um, this is something that as a, as, a, as a manager of this department, I may be responsible for approving these. So I can click into these, I can review the data, and then I can approve it. I can send it back to revision, or maybe I want to reject it. Maybe this is a model that we already uh, end of life in our organization. We don't want to use it anymore. I can reject it. Um, or maybe, you know, maybe it's a duplicate or something like that. You might want to get rid of it. But this is the idea. It's a, it's a consistent way to track the workflows around these models to make sure they're consistent, to make sure that everyone's aware of the, the data around this model. We have all the documents we need. It's all in place before we start to bring this online. Um, and there's no questions about it. So it's, it's a great tool. There's going to be more uh, around this whole idea of models coming soon. But I wanted to talk about this, all of this model dashboard and the rigor around data collection and processes for approval leads to being able to find the stuff when you need to find the stuff. Um, and what I want to do is I want to take you into, let me jump into a site. And I'm logged in as a requester. And a requester is someone with very limited access to the system. They're just putting in tickets for people. So uh, this could be a clinician who, uh, they need to submit a, a facilities request. They need to submit a request to Biomed. Maybe it's an IT request. You can have all these different uh, service departments in our system uh, that are each one is completely customizable with permissions and things like that. Um, so I'm logged in as that person. I'm looking at my request portal. I can submit a request into, to, you know, you might just have one, one department. You can have multiples. It really depends on, on how you implement the work. So 
I can see any of my existing requests that I've submitted as a user. I can see the status of it. It's in progress. It's still a request. Um, I can click into Biomed, let's say, and our goal here is to make this super simple to find your equipment. Um, some of the stuff that we've seen our clients doing currently is that the, the search for equipment was so cumbersome that they kind of gave up on having the people in the field tell you what equipment it was because they were never finding the right one. It was too frustrating and, and it was just too annoying. Um, that is, a, a, you're circumventing a best practice because of the system you're using. So if you can have a system that makes it easy to find stuff, um, you can get the better accurate data from the field at the source of truth where someone is. Um, so what happens now if I'm a requester and I click on Biomed, I can start with an asset. So I can say, okay, let's do, let's pick our sterilizer again. I'll just type stare. As I type more, it starts to break it down. Oops. I can find my sterilizer. Okay, it's automatically selected that for me. Um, if I have a barcode, of course I can use that. Let me get rid of this. Um, so if I'm if I have a barcode number on this thing, this piece of equipment, which is your your best identifier of the piece of equipment, um, even if I'm on a cart and I'm hooked up to a barcode scanner, I can scan it, or I can type in the barcode number, and it goes and finds it. It it linked it and it shows me all the recent stuff for that piece of equipment right away, and I can finish up typing in my uh, description. So other things that I can do is I can, it's searching for a lot of different things. Um, so if I typed um, the manufacturer, GetInj, if I type the model, it's gonna find that, the serial, even the location, I could type that, um, and it's gonna find equipment in those locations. So it's searching all of these things super fast, and you can narrow down your list just by typing more. You can get the barcode. Um, if you put in the barcode and it just it finds that asset, it'll select it automatically for you. Super quick to find things. You get immediate feedback as far as did someone already submit this request that I'm about to submit because I can see it over here. So speaking of barcoding, let's do another poll. Um, how many of you currently who are on the line have your equipment barcoded already? So Teresa's popped up a poll. This one's uh, a lot easier, less options. Um, if you're barcoded, the nice thing about the Works Hub is that we can, there's like a 99% chance we'll be able to support your existing barcodes if it's already barcoded. If you're not barcoded, we can print barcodes from our system or you could go buy QR codes or other types of third-party barcodes and stick those on things and we can support them. Um, we have our own built-in barcode templates we can print from. You just go and buy durable laser printers and look at that, even split. So some people are barcoded, some aren't. So if you're already barcoded, um, a lot of the work is done. If you adopt the Works Hub, we can scan those barcodes. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, if you're not barcoded, we can print from our system or you can go get your own barcodes. And for some, it might not be important to put those barcodes, but it add, barcoding adds a whole um, streamlines the workflow and really increases data accuracy because there's you just scan the barcode and, and we know exactly what you're talking about. So as far as submitting a request, um, very straightforward. You pick your asset, you can describe your issue, um, any additional details, and it can default to the logged in user to, to say who that is and put phone numbers. You can do this thing where you can notify others um, if you want to make sure that, uh, let's say there's someone else who um, knows all about this piece of equipment, um, or maybe you've got a distribution list specifically for sterilizers, you can create, you can make sure all those people get notified of this request. Um, and of course, photos, files, you can attach um, to this request as well. So that's on the requesting side. Um, let's jump into, and that's not a full-blown work order, so this is just a request. There's an appro uh, approval process for these, so someone can triage them and say, okay, I'm accepting this work order. Uh, I'm gonna sign it out. Uh, there is some automatic routing that can happen as well, where if you're using templates, stuff can bypass the request stage, go straight to a technician and automatically route to them. Uh, we typically recommend that for really fast workflows and fast response times to, to create a template system where there's a bunch of templates for the common failures of equipment. 
um, and just put automatic routing rules on those and, and route them to individuals or to teams to make sure they get in front of eyeballs right away. So let's do this. Let's, let's play on this barcode topic for a minute. And I am going to share my phone. And we're going to scan a barcode. So let's see. Seamless transition there. Good work. Did this work? Yeah. You see my phone now? Okay, I good. Do. Good now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, got my phone up here. This is Samsung phone, so iOS, Android, um, tablets too. Um, doesn't have to be a phone, it could be a tablet. So you can see it's a different UI here. We're on a, a mobile first designed um, uh, experience. It's a touch driven. It's still in your browser, but it works like a native app that would be installed on your phone. Um, so as far as, let me pull up a, a barcode here. And let's do this. I am going to see my monitor. There's a barcode. I scan it. It takes me right into my um, good old main sterilizer. And I can see right away details about the device, photos, and whatnot. I can add a work order directly um, to that. There's an add work order for this asset if I encounter a deficiency. But I can also see open work orders. And one of the... Um, Anything that's assigned to me as a logged in user, so this is work that I need to do, I can immediately tap, start a timer, and go work on that job. As far as these other ones in here, there's some PMs in here. Um, it won't let me, there's a setting in our system, which is commonly used in Biomed. It won't let me complete those PMs while there's an open corrective work order in there. So if I went into any one of um, any one of these PMs, and let's say I wanted to complete it, I go market complete, and it's going to tell me you can't complete this because of corrective work order that's open. That's the corrective work order I started running the timer on. Uh, but you can put rules in place to prevent um, things like this from happening. You want to make sure you, you deal with that corrective. Let me just go back and back. Um, so not only can I see open work orders and immediately drill into them after scanning the barcode, I can see attachments. I can look at work history too, if I wanted to jump into some work history. Um, and it says last five, we show you last five and then you can load more and you can go back further and further into history of a piece of equipment. You can look at the notes on, the, on, those, on those historical work orders. Then of course we can look at attachments. So if you need to get access to uh, manuals or other photos and things like that, you can download them straight from here. Okay, right from that, that device or right from that, that record on mobile. So that's the idea behind mobile. Uh, again, this is role-based, so your, your clinical engineers might not have access to everything within the works hub, but you can customize sort of what's on their dashboard. Um, I happen to be logged in as someone who has both maintenance and biomed. I can toggle between these two different um, service departments. Okay, I can add assets, I can, I can add requests, I can search for, for things. So it's very robust, very easy to use, and barcoding takes it to a next level as far as uh, you're just using your onboard camera, you don't need an extra peripheral. If you do want to, to pair a Bluetooth barcode scanner, like an a, a external scanner, you can do that as well um, to use a Bluetooth barcode scanner for scanning things. And that's a common, um, so mobile is great for being in the field or when you just got to grab your phone and get out but still get your work done and be in touch. Um, we can also do, one of the things you'll see is um, push notifications. You can see one here. This comes from the works up so it can push notifications to me here on my phone or on my desktop and when I click on it, it'll take me right into that record. It happens to be a work order. So you can subscribe to push you can set up your phone. I'm in Do Not Disturb, so it didn't really pop in front of me. But you can set it up such that it'll vibrate or it'll uh, show up in your notification tray, and you'll get access to that uh, work order right away, uh, right from your notification tray. So you can get these push notifications on your on your phone as well. Because um, I was demoing, I didn't it didn't show up right in my face immediately. Okay, but it takes me into that work order, and I can see exactly what that one is that came in. 
okay, push is nice. Um, it just gives you another channel to, to, to get notified of things when you're out in the field. Uh, you can stay on top. You might be heading to a job and you get a push for something that's on your way. You might be able to knock that, up, that one off too. We've got a question here. Uh, what will not function when we are in offline mode? Uh, so what, what, is, what are our two differences there? So that's a great question. So we support offline. You can see this toggle up here. Um, I can flip into offline mode. The major things that won't be supported, um, file downloads and file uploads. So snapping a photo of a, a breakdown or, or a, a damaged device or non-functional device, that won't work. You can snap the photo and upload it later, but you won't be able to upload it, obviously, if you're not connected. Um, you won't be able to access manuals and attachment files on a piece of equipment or on a, on a work order. Those won't be accessible because they're out in the cloud. Um, that's as of today, barcoding is not, barcode scanning is not available while offline, but that's something we're looking to change with some recent advancements we've made uh, to support offline barcoding. Um, so for the most part, all of your work orders will still be there. You can work in an offline mode. Um, it's very straightforward, just toggle offline. It'll download, the first sync to download the stuff takes a bit of time, but subsequent syncs to, to download data, you can do like incremental snapshots to just download the new stuff. It becomes pretty speedy. Um, so we see a lot of workflows where it's like, I'm in the, in the shop in the morning, um, I'll download my data, I'll work offline for the morning. When I come back from my break, I'll come back online, sync all my stuff up, et cetera. Um, so we color code things once you go offline. Um, you can still see your work orders. You can see your timers that are running, uh, that timer that was running on that last one. Um, you can drill into these, mark stuff complete, log time, all that stuff. When you come back online, uh, you just click online and it'll sync that stuff up. So that's a good question. Anything related to files you can't do, and at this point barcoding you can't do while offline, but almost everything else you can still do. And then we've got, a, we got another one here about uh, getting notifications from all the uh, other departments. And I think the easiest question that is you only see notifications for things you're assigned to. So if a technician is not assigned to be able to be assigned IT work, they wouldn't see those notifications. So it's all about permissions about which notifications you do and don't see. If you're running one department or 10 departments in the work sub, you only see the things that you are, are assigned to. So the case that Kyle's using right now, this specific user has got multiple departments assigned to them. In a lot of cases we see with our multiple department users, Technicians only will see that one department, and you only see the notification for that one department that you are assigned to. Now, there are, as far as like, um, there's various ways that you get notified of things. You can get notified if you're assigned to something. You can get notified, you can choose to get notified of all new requests that come in. So any request that comes in from the field, you can get notified of that. And there's a bunch of other rules that you can set up generically if you want to get notified for every single thing because you're like that you can get you can go that far but uh, i think we all got enough emails and, and notifications but uh, there's various rules around notification it's pretty robust as far as what you can do uh, but like Braden said we get you have the tools available to to narrow um your vision into or narrow your notification window so you're not getting bombarded with stuff um, i think that's best and and choosing channels that make the most sense. A push notification makes a, a lot of good sense for someone who's on a phone, who's gonna be out in the field all day, uh, who might not be checking email all the time, they're gonna get these pushed through their, their browser. So let me pause again. I'm gonna jump into, stop share, let me jump into the works up again. And I just wanna look at an, an asset form and talk through some of the stuff that's on, we've added to our fixed asset form in the works hub. So I'm loading up the main sterilizer again. So when I'm looking at the asset form, um, I've got some basic stuff, model, serial, barcode that goes with it, manufacturer, um, some detail you can assign it to, to account budget codes, um, cost centers, purchase date, purchase cost, you can see a quick snapshot of some history, open and complete work orders, recently completed work orders, any upcoming schedules that are on this. Um, asset ownership, so where is this? Who owns this? Do we own it? Is it, um, let me update it because it's owned. You can say that it's, it's a loaner, it's physician owned, it's a trial. Um, there's a lot of different options here just to exclude stuff on certain reports, report on all of your loaners. Uh, those sorts of things can, can happen here. One of the things you're also seeing 
is this preview if you're if you're subject to, to compliance from joint commission uh, we can marry stuff up to your assets um, and show you standards that apply and you can run reports specifically on this so show me all the the assets that fall under uh, 020403 EP4 um, you can do that as well okay of course some of the things we talked about as well does this have a manual time change uh, does it contain PHI have clinical alarms all those things you can track on an individual asset basis so you can get reports off on those things specifically if you want to see if daylight savings time is coming you want to run a report on everything needs a manual time change you can do that network info is a is sort of a, a, a big deal with a lot of these equipment because a lot of them are connected in some way um, so you can track for your um, IT department or for troubleshooting and maintenance details you might need to be able to present or track the MAC address for something or what gateway it's hooked into so there's a lot of IT networking related fields you can track on a device um, so if maybe I want to track um, which wall jack it's plugged into you can do that maybe I want to track uh, which port etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's what wireless SSID is it connected to we're not tracking passwords in here um, it's just some information that you can export or run or uh, export from your search if you need to provide this to your IT department um, to help you troubleshoot devices okay we're tracking who's viewed this panel we always track who's editing stuff in our log panel in our system uh, but we're also tracking views on this because it is uh, somewhat more sensitive information so through permissions you can prevent people from getting access to this uh, but even so we want to make sure we're tracking who's even looked at this information and we, we do talked have coming about, in this uh, next release for our Epic users. We do have Epic ID and a few things are on Epic that are coming in this next release to be able to track the, those Epic fields. So those are coming, uh, even though you don't see those today. So on a piece of equipment, a lot of other stuff came through. We've got here our risk assessments, um, AEM details on here as well. One thing I wanted to look at was batteries. Um, you saw I had a model in my model area. I had added the model after my asset was already in there. We're in a, a dev environment, so it's not exactly matched up to that, that model. But again, you can track batteries here. If I had batteries set up, you would see them set up here as well. And the battery thing is nice. You run reports on your batteries. Uh, you can ex do a specific search on batteries. It's pretty robust and, and pretty powerful. Then, of course, we've got our um, attachments here. Okay, so these attachments, anytime I've got a piece of equipment I want to attach a file, um, it's really straightforward. I can I can pick something from my existing library of already uploaded files, uh, or I can upload from my computer, Dropbox, a URL, maybe you want to link to a YouTube video, something like that, uh, on, on PM on this item. You can do that as well. And then the log safety notes, of course, are on here, and all that stuff will carry forward to any work or PM that goes, goes on with this asset. Then, of course, a log. We log everything. So if you've edited it, if you've scanned this barcode, um, you've changed things, you've changed the status of the asset. You can see this log is very, very thorough. Um, so if you ever need to track down exactly who was changing info, uh, even though you control all that through permission, sometimes you need to go back to the log and see, okay, who did what? Uh, we've, got, we've got you covered there. So a lot of this will lead us into um, reporting. Let me jump over to reporting for a moment. And reporting is is interesting. This is a, an area where a lot of people struggle with their systems. Um, we've got some, uh, what we call a report library. So a library is a set of items um, that we define as like good ideas for you to use and you can basically adopt them and add them to your favorites list. We're not gonna clutter your list with, with favorite reports. Um, you can create your own favorites and then put them on your um, favorites tab here and you can reorganize and group things differently depending on how you want to run. Um, and then if you're starting from scratch and you're like, okay, let me let me create a report of all my open, um, overdue biomed PMs. You can create a work order report uh, for specifically that and save it as a favorite if it's something you wanted to, to run quite frequently. So let's say for example, I wanted to look at just biomed and I want to look at um, everything that was created in the last year that's still in progress um, or let's say on hold 
and that came from my PM. So this is scheduled work. Okay, I can save this and call this um, <clears throat> maybe I wanted to see that it's overdue. There's other advanced filters, so let's do overdue only. Um, I can save that report. That means it'll be accessible with all the filters I just set with a single click next time. Um, so if I went back to my favorites tab, for example, I could have run that report right there, uh, but I wanted to show you the favorites. So essentially here, it's a single click now. Anytime I want to run it, it's going to show me for the last one year, anything that's overdue and open PM in Biomed. And it's simple, simple as running it. Um, and it'll generate that report. Luckily, I got nothing right now in my system. Uh, that's a good thing. But this is one of those reports that um, you can create as a favorite. And what I would tend to do is then subscribe to this and say, you know what, send me this report every week. Let's have a great Monday and let's get it every one week on Monday starting today. Um, and lucky colleagues, y'all are going to get it. So you can link other people in. So they're going to get this e this report sent to them as a PDF attachment every Monday morning at sort of 4 a.m. or something like that. Um, and it'll show them all their open overdue biomed PMs. Okay. And subscriptions are super powerful, something that uh, – everyone should have and be using and leaning on. Um, the report library is anytime we at Dude Solutions have a new unique way to filter and sort and group reports to accomplish a need that we're hearing from our client, we can push it out to the library and you can see these items and say, okay, let's find all these cannot find assets. Let's add this to my favorites. And now I've got a new report here called cannot find assets. And I just click that and it's gonna look for any piece of equipment with a cannot find status. Okay, so I had to do no work configuring that report. Dude Solutions created it. We pushed it out to the library. We could put little badges on, on things to say, hey, there's something new there. Um, and you can go look to see what's new in the library and start to adopt those. Uh, we can put pop-ups in our system to tell you that there's a new report and, and what it is. So there's a lot of different ways using the asset data and the asset statuses that we can get you reports really easily out of our system. Um, and cannot locate a big one that we see a lot of our clients struggle with. So I feel like I've been talking a lot. Um, we're running short on time. I think it's it's probably useful for us to jump into Q and A. Do we want to do that? Let's do that now, maybe, and yeah. take a look at some of the questions that are out there. Uh, we've got we've got some hard ones in here today um, in Q and A. Um, I think we'll, if we hit this one, maybe um, if there is a uh, what is it, the largest number of assets that are currently uh, that we're currently managing? And if there's any limitations for large organizations, so there are no limitations um, as far as the largest number of assets we're managing. We're reasonably new into specifically the biomed space. I think it's in six thousand something like that in our facility space, which uses the same backend uh, asset engine. Um, I think twenty five thousand is the largest we've got, but there is no theoretical limit to that. On our, we manage the database, we manage the performance, we manage all the CPUs, that's all on us. Um, so there should be no limit to that. Um, but as far as how do we manage large organizations, there's another layer on top of this that we didn't really get into. We call it Works IQ, and it's really for um, large organizations that have multiple regions and sites where you can roll up all of your data across those sites and drill down into it. So you've got a centralized corporate dashboard and you can drill into each of your sites um, individually if there's questions that you can't answer at the highest level of, of KPIs and analytics. Uh, this is the next one here. Uh, do you have a, do we have a demo site that someone can play around with for a couple of days and explore further? Uh, and we do, but if you want to reach out to your uh, DSI sales rep, and we, uh, we can work with you in setting up some demos, getting live with demo with one of our solutions consultants and really help you explore how the works hub can start, can solve your uh, operation, make your operation move, run a little smoother. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, here's, a, here's another one. How does your CMMS support full equipment lifecycle, equipment purchasing, PO tracking, end of life, end of support, 
uh, documentation and total cost of ownership and total cost of average cost by model to support uh, annually recommendations for operational expense replacements. This one's a this one's a great question. So we we have we didn't look at it here, but we do have capacity to to create purchase orders in our system and, and order equipment and all of that and and track that part of the equation. Then bringing the quick system online, we're tracking all the costs for repair that go with your equipment. Uh, we can end of life models or an individual asset on our system. Uh, one thing that we don't have, and so obviously you can report on that, uh, but we have no. We're working on sort of more better high level KPIs around total cost of ownership uh, for a given asset. Uh, we are not marrying that data to utilization of that piece of equipment in any way. Um, so we're not connecting to any of your systems to know, to, to compare util patient utilization to cost of ownership. That's a future problem we're gonna try and solve. But for right now, we can, we can generate costs. Uh, we can do, um, through our capital planning app, we can do replacement forecasting of, of your fleet and things like that. Um, but this is an area where all the pieces are in place uh, there's a lot of cost reporting that goes on this, but there's probably improvements that we need to make. And, and the, the more we get customers engaging with us, the more we can talk to what those things are and build them out to our system. Um, just to talk a bit about how we work uh, on the product and engineering side uh, to deliver this product, uh, we're always delivering new feature functionality. We've got idea portal that we track all of the, the ideas and things that customers are looking for out of our system. In the last 12 months, I think we launched over a hundred new ideas into our system. And these are above, say, building a biomed app or building the things that are planned on our roadmap. These are new ideas that came in that we, we looked at, we evaluated the entire uh, uh, company said, yeah, these are good ones. We should probably get on that. And we build those out. So it's the roadmap evolves. We're taking feedback, we're listening. Uh, this is how we like to work is, is let's get as close to the people who care the most about it, get their feedback and, and go forward. Um, we have time for one, see if we got one more easy one here to answer. Um, can you assign a primary, secondary, and territory for service request uh, independent of PM service request? Um, I think we can. So we've got some interesting ways that you can do some work automation. So if you've got a primary team that might service a, a specific type of, of category of assets, so say your infusion pump team, you can do some work routing. So any request that comes in for an infusion pump, would route directly to that team. And then you can have backups to that team. So if they're all say uh, out of work this week, that that work can then file to a, um, can flow into a follow-up team. So you always know that as work is being routed, it's going to appropriate teams. And this feature becomes in a really handy if you've got large fleets of the equipment. So that way you don't wanna have a requester that has to improve every single infusion pump malfunction that you can route those. So you can say that if it's a software malfunction, it's going on uh, my, uh, Infusion pump, it's going to this team. If it's a uh, clinical alarm issue that I'm just getting way too many alarms, it can go to specific um, technicians. So a really great way to maintain that workflow and to automate it and do, a, and do more with less, which uh, we know hospital budgets right now are under a lot of pressure. So this is one of those great features that you can really maximize, maximize the utilization of not just your team, but also of your entire fleet. Right. So one of the things that Brayden was talking about, you can build queues of routing queues that can go to individuals, they can go to teams as well. Um, and you can look at essentially who's in the queue, working schedules, all that sort of stuff to sort of automate some of the stuff to go through so it can go on autopilot a bit. Uh, a lot of this requires advanced thinking about what are the templates I'm gonna use at the request phase to make sure if something's gonna go straight from a requester's keyboard to a uh, clinical engineer, it's got to be right. Um, so using templates can sort of streamline the requester process to make sure that we're asking the right questions for the requesters, that when it goes directly to a technician without overview, that they've got the data that they need to do the job right, which is often a struggle. Um, so we, we um, I, I'm, I'm sort of stunned by one of the questions here because I wanted to talk about this. Um, so I just saw a question come in. So to come back to the previous one, yeah, we can do the primary, secondary, tertiary uh, routing on request if that's what we're talking about. Um, 
one of the questions that came in is the med tester 5000C. So earlier on in the, the presentation, we were talking about things that we know of that we haven't done yet. That's one of them. Um, connecting with, with med testers or other sort of uh, electrical diagnostic equipment and things like that, we're not doing yet. Um, I've seen a lot of our competitors doing that. Um, it's something that we're interested in. We need someone who's got those devices, who's willing to work with us to build out that integration so we can get some scope around it and figure out how to make it work and make it useful. In a lot of the steps that I've seen on how that works, it's super tedious um, to get the data and get those things connected. Uh, but I'd like to to sort of look through that and, and work with, with a partner to see how we're going to do this and how we can make it efficient for you. So short story, no, we don't. Long story is, uh, yeah, let's let's figure out how to do it. So if you've got it and it's something that's important to you, we can talk through how to make that a uh, reality in our system. Okay, so I think we're out of time. That time flew by. Sometimes I feel like an hour is a really long time to, to be in one of these, and sometimes I wish we had a little longer. Yes. Awesome. Th thank you guys um, both so much. And just a, a quick note, um, we've launched one last poll. So um, if everyone who is um, participating today, if, if you are able to respond to that, that would be great. Um, this is just in, in the event that you would like more information about um, you know, biomed and how it can help your organization. Um, we would love to be able to talk with you further and answer any additional questions that you have. Um, as Braden said, an hour does go by very quickly. Um, so we would love to be able to just spend time. And um, and Kyle mentioned that, you know, our team often works really closely with the clients and, you know, and we have the suggestion and just working, you know, that that's something that um, is really valuable to us to make sure that we're truly solving and, and helping to solve for that, um, you know, pain points and issues that you all have. So um, thank Thank you all so much for joining today. Thank you so much, Kyle and Brayden. This is really fantastic information. Um, really appreciate everyone spending some time on here today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our team. Um, we would be more than happy to um, be able to share more information. So thank you, everyone.